Welcome to Beyond the Data. I'm Dr. Phoebe Thorpe, and here with me today is Dr. Mona Hannah Atisha, a pediatrician from Flint, Michigan. Thanks. For, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Today's session was about preventing um, childhood lead poisoning. Uh, one of the problems with it is that lead poisoning isn't always really apparent in children. What is being done to uh, make increase awareness of lead, childhood lead poisoning and and prevent it? Yeah, so you know, really before Flint, we as a nation thought we took care of lead, that it was a problem of yesterday, and lead levels have been coming down, we got lead out of paint and lead out of gasoline, and, and what Flint has really reminded us is that it's a problem of yesterday, it's a problem of today, and it's a problem of tomorrow. Um, and it's unfortunately a problem that we can't really see. Kids don't present with acute lead poisoning as they used to do decades ago, but incredible science has now taught us that there is no safe level of lead exposure, and that we have to be even more vigilant about uh, finding that lead in our environment before children are exposed. Um, so what's happening right now is increased awareness, really because of Flint nationally, about what lead does to children um, and how we can really be proactive and do the primary prevention work, which means checking the lead in the environment before children are ever exposed. Yeah, what happened in Flint is, if Flint is just a tragedy, just a tragedy, um, but you are very, um, gracious in your presentation to talk about how you've taken that tragedy and transformed it into beauty. What, what have you done? What have you in the Flint community done to do that? Yeah, you know, from the moment that we realized this, that we had this population-wide lead exposure, on top of really so many toxicities, toxicities of poverty and violence and all these things that impact the development of children, when we realized we had this added toxic stress, um, we really rolled up our sleeves and began to work hand-in-hand -hand with our community partners to make sure that our children did not see the consequences of, of this crisis. Um, so what we've been able to put in place has really been reliant on science. Science, um, respecting the science of lead's neurotoxicity, but really also respecting the emerging science of child development and resilience and toxic stress, and putting into place holistic, evidence-based development-promoting interventions. Things like home visiting programs and early child care, universal preschool, school health services, nutrition support, Medicaid expansion, all these things that we know that science has taught us promote the development of children. So really taking a wraparound approach Approach to mitigating the impact of this crisis. So there's, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot that's going on. What, what has been important? I'm sure there's a lot of partnerships and support. How, how have you been able to bring those together? Absolutely. All of this work is hand in hand with different levels of government, with academia, with philanthropy, with nonprofit organizations. But our most important partner have been the people of Flint, mm -hmm. uh, working hand in hand with the people of Flint. And in my initiative, we actually have a parent partner group where we meet with parents who advise us and inform our work. Um, and even more important than that, we have a group of children, the Flint Kids Justice League, um, they've, they've just renamed themselves, that we meet with routinely that also tell us what we should be doing. So our work is community informed, community driven, and community participatory. Wow, that's fabulous to hear that. It's really, really awesome. Um, if other community, I know other communities are, uh, with this increased awareness, other communities are becoming aware of the lead problems that they are facing. Where, what would you tell them to look for in, in when they're building their coalitions? What made them in, uh, successful? Yeah, I think really having kind of an open mind. I, you know, as a pediatrician, before all this, I thought we kind of had a monopoly on caring for children. Like, who cares about kids more than pediatricians? Um, and I was proven wrong time and time again because so do educators and so do moms and so do journalists and so do engineers and so do landlords and so do, you know, so many other folks. So build a really big team, a diverse team, um, a multi-sector team of folks who care about the same thing, especially when you're trying to do something that involves many sectors, like lead elimination work. Mm -hmm. it, and I know in the presentation they talked about, too, about government, and there's the get the lead out with the private partnerships. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things that are going on and places to look for information. If somebody was interested in knowing more, where where could they look for it? Yeah, I think there's a lot of great resources out there. Um, the cdc.gov website, um, uh, the, specifically the, the lead page, has a lot of great resources and, and great links to, to learn more about what, what you can do um, and what you need to look for. Mm -hmm. 
And what about your public health initiative? Yeah, so um, we are we have just launched something called the Flint Registry, which is funded by CDC, flintregistry.org. Uh, if you click on there, you'll also find out what's happening in Flint um, and also get links to some of our other work that, that we're doing. Ah, okay, it sounds like it's fabulous work and really, really appreciate what you've done. Thank, thank you. Thank you, it's an honor to be here with you, Phoebe. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us for Beyond the Data. See you next time.